Ms. Belden, do you have any cross-examination for Mr. Coleman? I do, Your Honor. Thank you. And one second, sir. It looks like um, I muted you during our break. If you could just unmute your There should be a prompt. I just clicked on it. There we go. Can you true? Okay. okay. Have we ever met or interacted prior to me filing a pleading in this matter on January 13th of this year? No. Okay. And have you and I ever spoken about this matter prior to this morning? Uh, no. Have we talked in person? No. On the phone? No. Via email? I sent you a couple emails. That's it. Okay. Um, I'm going to direct you to exhibits one and two of my supplemental response. Um, have you looked at those? Um, and can you confirm that those are emails you sent me this past weekend? They are. Okay. Um, so you did you did send me an email dated January 14th um, that reads, Dear Megan, you are very ill-informed, uneducated person who obviously does not understand what is in the best interest of my son and would see him put in harm's way by forcing us to interact with the defendant, her husband, and family. I am not a hippie. I do not go to hippie festivals or live a nomadic life as the defendant and her family. I am not a spoiled white privileged brat like the defendant and her husband. I work for my money. I was not raised in Michigan. I was raised in the South, lady. Be aware. I don't play your CD Michigan head games. I will be filing my response to your nonsensical rubbish you wrote post haste. Um, it goes on from there. Um, what did you mean by um, I was not raised in Michigan? I was great. I was raised in the South, lady. Be aware. Well, in the South, you know, we don't play like CD Michigan head games. Um, you know, it's pretty, we're, we're honest. We're, you know, you respect men. You don't uh, say things that aren't true about them. Saying, I, I live a nomadic lifestyle. I'm a farmhand, um, you know, that I passed out. Um, you're obviously ill-informed, uh, uneducated. Even children who grow up in a nomadic lifestyle, um, you know, still, uh, still live a normal life, even okay. if I was nomadic. Um, so Mr. Coleman, would you acknowledge that that was a threat made to me? No, that's not a threat. You don't view that as a threat. Okay, but do you, no. would you acknowledge that those are put downs made to someone that you don't know? Um, well, obviously I'm responding to, to what you said. Okay. Um, I'm, okay. Obviously you are uneducated if you don't realize that, um, you know, like in psychology, once again, I say like, you know, nomadic children, um, you could grow up that traveling around as long as they have both parents, then they live a healthy life. Okay, Coleman, I'm, I'm asking the questions. Um, I'm going to ask you a question. What is your educational background? Um, I have a year and a half of psychology. I, I have, uh, you know, high school diploma. Okay. Um, I think you, so you have a high school diploma and you took a year and a half towards psychology. Do you have a, a college degree? I never got my degree, you know, my uh, online college that okay. was Harvard University uh, actually closed and I wasn't able to complete it. Okay, fair enough. Um, okay, I'm now going to direct you to exhibit two of my supplemental re supplemental response. Um, that's an email sent on Sunday, January 15th. Um, had I communicated with you from your email from Saturday, January 14th to between that and January 15th? Had we had any communication? Uh, no. No, Okay. Um, but you did send me another email dated January 15th at uh, two in the afternoon. The subject is your lies. Um, I will not support another low life guy by paying more child support. Um, I spoke with my son and he is more than willing to do the in-camera interview. He understands his mother is liar and you are also. Both you and the defendant need to apologize to myself and my son. No, do not threaten me with child protective services. I don't know who think you are by making up the things you said in your response. Not one thing you wrote is true. It is disgusting. You are a very bad liar and should ashamed of yourself. You did write these things to me. Yes, and I mean them. Okay. And um, where in my pleading do I threaten child protective services? Uh, you, you wrote, um, I'd have to pull it up, but you said that you would call this protective services. If, you know, uh, the defendant, if my son didn't call. Okay, I, I did not write that. I, I would be interested to have you pull that up because that's not on my recollection at all. Um, but okay, let's, let's move on. Um, I'm going to direct you now to exhibit four of my supplemental response. Um, I'll have you take a look at that. 
Can you confirm that that is a text you sent to defendant's husband, Kevin LaRose? Um, let's see. Yeah, I, I did send him a text message um, when I was pretty upset. Um, you know, the term boy on Hawaii is, is, is considered a, a crazy person who doesn't respect their elders. I'm, you know, he's half my age. Um, once again, like I said, I'm from the South. Uh, men settle their differences without women and children present. If the, you know, if, if Kevin has any uh, issues with me, I'm totally willing to meet him without uh, my son or his wife present to discuss them. It shouldn't be discussed in front of our son. Okay. He his, wants wife, his, his wife, I'm sorry, who's your co-parent, correct? Yeah. So you would rather discuss issues concerning your child with your co-parent spouse, not with your co-parent? Well, if he's going to tell me to take my son's property and leave Michigan, um, okay. I, I just don't feel that's healthy to do in, in front of my son. I mean, okay, so I'm going to direct you back really, to I'm going to direct you back. To fight with me, so I don't. I'm sorry, I've, I've got a question for you. It's my turn to to talk. Um, direct you back to that exhibit four. In that exhibit four, you are you state in part you are so dishonest. What is wrong with you? You are going to pay for this. I promise. Is that a threat? No. I mean, we, we all, in the end, we're all going to be accountable. Okay, what, what do you mean by that, sir? Well, I mean, I, I have a devoted Christian. You know, in the end, we're all going to pay and be accountable. Okay, Not so this, this, was, this, was a, this was a religious reference that um, you could promise that he was going to pay for this in the sense of where he where he ends up at the end of this life. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, if he's dishonest and doesn't res respect uh, me as Isaac's father, and okay. would like to lie and, and you know, demand that okay. he's gonna, in the end, he's gonna pay. I mean, okay, you go You go on to say, um, are you that bad a tuba player? Or are you, they just slandering you? Never heard you, but I play a mean French horn, son. That's a joke. Isaac likes you. Man up, boy. Um, what does man up, boy mean? Well, be a man. I mean, be accountable. You should apologize to both myself and my son for, for what he did to us, but he refuses. Once again, the term boy is someone who doesn't respect their elders. While, you know, on Hawaii, uncle or auntie is, a, a, you know, uh, considered a man. I mean, he's half my age. And isn't the defendant half your age, too? No, she's, I believe, 10 years younger than me. I think more like 13, but okay. Um, how old are you, sir? Um, 47. 47. Okay. Um, and I believe the defendant is 31? 32. 32. Okay. So 15 year age difference. Um, okay. Still looking at that exhibit four, you go on to say still a chance to come clean before I get really fucking real motherfucking son. I from the South boy, we don't play. I serve God. I love my son and you disrespected us, me and up. Again, is that a threat? Once again, like he could be a man and apologize to me. I mean, if he was a man, he would. He would be accountable, but he's he's not. He prefers to be a boy and disrespect me. Okay. Um, but if I remember your testimony from just a little while ago, you said that you would be okay, um, that you think he is respectful, he was decent because he purchased a new iPhone cord for your, a charger for your son, and you would be okay with him ex doing the exchange of, of, of custody with Isaac between defendant yourself? I hold, you know, especially if he was to apologize, he seems to have, you know, Isaac likes him. He hasn't been abusive toward Isaac, you know, except in the one interaction, which really I feel like uh, the defendant kind of instigated. Um, you know, I believe that, you know, he he believes the defendant's lies that he's saying and she was egging him on to, to do the things that he did. And I feel like if he's willing to be accountable um, you know, and, and say, hey, it's kind of, you know, uncalled for, for me to demand that, uh, you know, you take your son's property and leave Michigan and it wouldn't happen again, that uh, there's no reason he, you know, we can't like have a healthy relationship if he's willing to man up and do that. I, okay. I haven't lost faith in him. I mean, I'm going to, I'm going to direct you to um, exhibit 18 of my supplemental response. Um, this is a text that um, you sent to defendant's father, Richard Bigham, just this week. Um, can you look at that and confirm that, please? Bless you, referee. Bless you, Your Honor. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. um, 
Yeah, I have it here on my phone. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to read this to you. Um, I am worried about Isaac. I am not getting a response from his phone or his mother. Your daughter is everything okay. I understand the weather is bad and the holidays. It is my job. His well-being, what is going on? Are they okay? I hope you are aware I am calling you as a witness for trial with your daughter, Sierra. I am also calling Summer. My son deserves a father who loves him not to spend his summer with you going to festivals. She is also demanding more child support now that she has married a low-life musician who doesn't work. It is awful what they did to us coming back from Alaska. It will never happen again. I am very angry, so I am texting you. Either you can come clean, be accountable, or I will find out what rehabs you were in on my own by any means necessary. I took a year and a half, H-A-V-L-E, of psychology to fight your pathological lying hippie daughter and to protect my son from you and fucked up family and mine. She has disrespected us for the last time. I do not back down, boy. Send me your email. I will send you the court documents so you will know why if you're a man. I will be at the doing laundry at the new laundromat by the old food land in the morning between 6.30 and 8 a.m. If you like to talk man to man when I am calm. Is that your exchange with, with the defendant's father? Yes. Okay. And, it, and now do you view that as a threat? She has disrespected us for the last time. I do not back down, boy. Does, is that a threat? Uh, no. I mean, um, you can come clean, be accountable, or I will find out what rehabs you were in on my own by any means necessary. Is that a threat? Um, no, I, I plan to. I mean, he could be accountable and say, hey, yeah, I, I, I was in rehab. Is this, the, is this what you reached out to him about where you said he, he didn't come and you were upset by that, that you asked him to meet you and he didn't come? No, he's, he's not willing to uh, be honest or be accountable. But you said you um, asked to meet with him. It was for this week when you wanted him to meet you at the laundromat between 6.30 and 8 a.m. after you wrote him this text exchange, this text. Yeah, there's no reason, you know, he couldn't show up and meet okay. me and discuss it honestly, man to man. Do you see how someone could view that as a threat and think they're not going to show up for some dynamic with you? Well, I don't understand why he wouldn't rather than have me uh, have to find out on my own what he has. He was doing. Okay. Well, um, being a man, man, I put in quotes, seems to be a big deal to you. What does that mean to you? Uh, being honest, having integrity, being accountable for your actions. Okay. Um, um, do you consider yourself a man? I'm totally accountable for my actions. Yes. So you are a man. I. I believe I am a man. I try to be as honest and a good father as I can be. Once again, I put myself out there um, to, to, you know, to meet the defendant's father, or and and we could just sit down and have a discussion, with, you know, in a public place. Is name, is name calling considered being a man in your book? Uh, name calling. Name calling. What, I, what what do you consider name calling, boy? Boy, um, your fucked up family. Your hippie daughter has disrespected us for the last time. I could go on and on. I mean, it's throughout all of my exhibits, the, the name calling, what you, what well, your, your communications with me for that matter. Is, that's what a man does. Um, maybe not. Maybe you're right in that fact. I'm, I'm a little, I get upset and I say things, references to, uh, you know, I, I don't like hippies very much. Um, they're, once again, they're, you know, very dishonest. They do a lot of drugs and, you it's know, hitting, it's, hitting, it's hitting a woman. Pushing a woman up against a wall and punching her in the breast. Is that? I never punched her. I did push her against her, the refrigerator. And once again, I'm accountable for my actions. I, that, that's I, being a man, sir. Being accountable for, for doing that and being okay. regretful okay. is being a man. And once again, I have to live with that for the rest of my life. So that's very hard for me. It's a very bad moment and I'm very regretful. I don't know how much more I can apologize or, you know, what I can, I can do. All I can do is just not let it happen again, you know, and um, I went through counseling, which really helped. Um, that was a very bad moment in my life. I'm very, very sorry for that, especially if, you know, my son's mother. Is. Okay. I'm going to direct you to exhibit 13 of my supplemental response. Again, these are texts between you and defendant. Um, I will read you a part. It says, ah, it took years to get over slamming you against the, slamming you against the refrigerator. And it would not have happened if I stuck to my standards and you also. But to say it's just me is not fear. 
I only wanted the respect of being Isaac's father. I am sorry about physically hurting you and that's something I have hold rest of my life, but I also have grown up and released that's what you wanted. Are, are you saying that um, defendant is somewhat re is somehow responsible for your actions of, of physically assaulting her? Well, she was egging me on at the time um, and I fell for it. Um, if I would have stuck, stuck to my standards in the beginning, uh, the first time she cheated on me and broke up with her, then it, it honestly wouldn't have happened. What, um, what, did, what did defendant do that you feel justified your behavior? What did she do that was quote, egging you on? Uh, she was threatening to uh, take my son from me and never let him, never let me see him again. Um, and referring to, you know, to him as Isaac Big Ham, both her and her father refused to recognize me. Um, I, I unfortunately let that get to me. Um, and once again, I, I feel very bad that I, I reacted that way. It's, it's, Mr. it's not something. Mr. Coleman, are you on Isaac's birth certificate? Yes. So you're identified as his father on his birth certificate. Yes, but they don't, uh, you know, acknowledge me as that. They, you know, they refer Mr. to him. Mr. Coleman, are you aware that Isaac's name at school is Isaac Coleman? I am, and it, it would seem to me that they could uh, recognize that and not call him Isaac Bigham to to me, or write letters addressed to Isaac Bigham. Um, you know, she she put a document on the table sent from her father that said that, and you know, I I I saw it, and then she's of course. Um, you know, saying that uh, she's going to take him from me and I'll never be able to see him again. And uh, I, I snapped. I, I, I let it get to me. And um, like, again, I say, if, it, if I had stuck to my standards, then, um, you know, I, I, I is it would. Feasible, is, it, is it feasible that that document was, it was a mistake that defendant's father wrote no. Megan? No, he's fully aware of my last name. Okay. Um, fully aware. So I'm going to now direct you. I just want to go through um, some things about you and defendant, your co-parenting abilities. Do you believe you and the defendant co-parent well together? Um, no. Okay. So you acknowledge that you do not co-parent well together. Um, well, it's not much co-parenting when she doesn't respond to my texts uh, about Isaac's safety. Um, you know, she over uh, listens to our conversations and um, makes Isaac uncomfortable. Um, you know, creates conflict in our interactions with meetings. She's not on time. Um, at this, you know, not good co-parenting. I mean, on both parts. I mean, obviously, uh, you know, I, I get upset very easily when she doesn't respond, um, you know, and she doesn't respond to get me upset. So. Okay. Um, as I look at the history in this file, I see on July 21st, 2017, the court first entered an order for custody support and parenting time. Um, in that order, um, it states that you were to start with um, five weeks of one visit per week of 45 minutes in duration through child and family services supervised. Did that happen? Yeah, that was really hard on my son. It was horrible for him and he experienced severe trauma. And the court identified that as therapeutic reunification. Do you know what um, Do you know what that means, or what they meant by that? Um, well, it's keeping <laughs> having your son meet uh, in a small little room with a complete stranger who's very rude um, and disrespectful. Um, he was terrified. Do you know he what the court's, Do you know what the court's reasoning was, though, with why they ordered therapeutic reunification? Had you been estranged from your son at that time? Um. I hadn't been at, uh, she had blocked our contact um, and not allowed to, for me to see him for, for months. For a month? I forget how many, it was months and months. I, I'm not sure. Okay. Were you living here at that time? Or were you here some of the time? I was, I was, I was spending, uh, you know, before I filed the, the motion, um, I was getting two days a week with him. Um, you know, and we were having healthy, happy interactions. So uh, I, Isaac admitted to me that he that her ex boyfriend was uh, dragging around by his hair, and then um, you know I went to his he was in, uh, enrolled in human nature school. Uh, two days after I confronted the defendant about this um, in a text message, she admitted that it actually happened. It was a bad moment. Um, 
you know, I showed up to his school and he wasn't there. And then um, I had, you know, two days later after trying to contact her to, to figure out what was going on, no response. I had uh, to call the okay. sheriff. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go on to the next question. On September 1st, 2017, you and defendant entered into a stipulated order regarding interim parenting time. And that was to continue with the one time weekly 45 minute visit with Isaac through Child and Family Services, that therapeutic reunification, um, and that you would attend mediation regarding parenting time. Is that correct? Yes, nothing was resolved in mediation. And of course, we went into trial. Well, it looks like on March 14th, 2018 was the next pleading. And that shows that um, you and defendant entered into a stipulation and order regarding unsupervised parenting time in which it was agreed that you would move to three hours of unsupervised parenting time per week with a commitment that you would participate in weekly individual counseling. Did that happen? Yes, I, I okay. was in counseling, court order counseling for a year and a half, as I stated before. Okay. Um, then I do see that on May 4th and 10th of 2018, a trial did take place and you and defendant at that time both had attorneys and you both um, presented evidence. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Um, that culminated in a court order dated August 28, 2018, that awarded you a gradual increase in parenting time that ended with, with the, the peak being that you would have two overnights, Tuesday and Wednesday of each week. Um, while you were residing in Traverse City with three weeks of uninterrupted parenting time to be ex exercised in the United States as follows with two weeks being consecutive weeks exercised between January 1st and June 1st, and then one week exercised between September 1st and December 31st. Did you, did you follow that order? Um, I don't remember, honestly, that was a very long time ago. Um, okay. uh, I'm, I don't think so. Honestly, I don't really remember um, how that went. Like I said, I, I did move back to Hawaii after my son was enrolled in school. Um, you know, she's canceled a lot of our uh, time together since then, but a lot of that time is during COVID. I wasn't ever able to exercise our summer together on Hawaii um, because of COVID-19. Um, I did fly to Michigan. Uh, to exercise my time there with him, um, which, uh, you know, I, I had, since I didn't get the summer together with him, I agreed verbally with the defendant that I would fly and get him in winter and bring him back to Hawaii to exercise our time. When I arrived in Michigan, she canceled um, our, our trip and I had to stay in Michigan. I stayed in Michigan for 30 days. And you said during, this was this was during COVID? Yes. Okay. Um, Okay, so I do see the next thing though is on June 1st, 2021, the current order that's in place went into effect and it was a stipulated order, meaning you and the defendant agreed to this. Um, and in that order, it says that um, you were now going to receive parenting time of five consecutive weeks in the summer. Is that correct? What caused that change in custody from 2018 to this 2021 order? What do you mean what caused? Well, I, I live on Hawaii. Okay. Full time. I mean, I've been here for 20 years. It's my home. Okay. Um, I note in your January 14th, 2023 responsive pleading, um, you state under factor A of the best interest analysis, um, quote, I have always been available to my son, even though I prefer to live on Kauai. Why do you prefer to live on Kauai? I think I know the answer. Well, I have uh, an online business here that, you know, I've always held, um, you know, since I started it before my son was born, um, I was still doing that in Michigan. Um, you know, I, I sell shell jewelry. Um, I ran out of product. I needed to come back. I prefer to be here. I, my business does way better when I'm living here. Okay. Um, so it wasn't forced on you. It was your decision to move back to Hawaii. Well, the severe harassment I was experiencing living in Michigan. Um, you know, I, I started the online business, uh, of selling herbal, herbal products with my ex-partner, Sierra. I actually started another one um, doing the same thing before I left, um, but I invested a lot of money in it, but um, I, I wasn't happy being harassed and I didn't want to have to keep having to be in court constantly. Um, you know, I decided it was more healthy and better for me to, to live on Hawaii and can scratch the new herbal business and continue what I do now. 
which is okay. so um, let's, a lot. More. So I'm looking at that June 20, June 1st, 2021 order. So that was at the start of summer of 2021. Did you exercise that five weeks of parenting time with Isaac that summer? Um, what year was that? 2021. Um, well, that was during COVID, as I believe. And we, you know, we both decided, I mean, that was right when COVID hit, as I remember. And, uh, you know, even if I had went and got him and brought him to Hawaii, you couldn't go to the beach. They weren't allowing people on the beach or, you know, we wouldn't have been do, to do anything. It wouldn't okay. have been fun. Uh, Mr. Coleman, again, this was two summers ago. So not last summer, but the previous summer, summer of 2021. Didn't you exercise five weeks of parenting time in Hawaii with Isaac that summer? Um, yes, if that's if that's not the okay. COVID summer. That's okay. the only summer I've missed is the COVID, COVID summer. Summer of 2020, okay. Um, so you did have Isaac in Hawaii for five weeks the summer of 2021? Yes. Um, what was your housing like for those five weeks? Where did you live? Um, I live on an organic farm. And what, what does that housing look like living on an organic farm? Uh, it's an outside living area. It's very comfortable. I have uh, like a, a 10 man tent and an outside structure. Um, there's like an inside shower. There's also the house, um, you know, with refrigerator and, and whatever. It's very comfortable. The defendant was fully aware of uh, the living conditions. She herself had visited the farm. Um, and knew the owner and, you know, never, she never said that she had any problem with that. Isaac really enjoyed it. It's okay. Did Isaac have his own room there? Um, no, it's, but like I said, it's a 10 man tent. He did have his, you know, um, stuff in there. It's plenty of room. When, it, when you say a tent, is it like a, um, like a tarp? No, like a, a 10 man, really big. An actual tent. tent. That, like you, you put poles in the ground and. It's up on a platform. It's not on the ground. It's a platform, a wooden platform. Okay. okay. So it literally is a, a tent. Yeah. Um, I'm going to now bring you to your January 14th responsive pleading. Um, in that you state under bullet point eight, the defendant was fully aware of the conditions of living on Hawaii and lived this way herself from the age of 14 to 19 years old. At no point in our time in Hawaii did the defendant mention any concerns with us living on an organic farm that she herself had been to. When I met the defendant, she was homeless, never worked, sleeping on the dirt without any knowledge or means to clean or wash herself or her clothes till I showed her how to make a hot shower for her to clean herself. I helped the defendant learn to work for money rather than live off the kindness and pity of others. That's true? Yes. How old was defendant when you met her then? Uh, I believe she was 18 or 19. Okay, so she had been living for four years in Hawaii with uh, not knowing how to take care of herself? Yes. Before she met you. Okay. Um, so she was, if she was 18 and you're 15 years older, then you were 33. I think, yeah, 32 or 33. Okay. Um, why did you show her how to make a hot shower when, rather than just let her use like your shower? Well, were she you, was. Were you living in a home? Me? I was living uh, then, I was a caregiver. Um, the, the place she was living is like a remote um, uh, national, I guess, state park. Okay. Um, you know, her and her family were kind of like lived out of their van when they weren't there. Um, she had never worked and or, or held a job or rented a place. She was either sleeping, you know, she didn't even have a tent or a, a how to, knew how to make a hot shower. I made a hot shower for her. Um, you know, and when we started dating, um, I helped her start a cleaning business um, where she's making excellent money, $30 an hour. Um, she'd never, ever had a job before, but like a real job. Um, so and, let's, let's get back to you, Mr. Coleman. You were a caregiver. So were you living in someone's home caring for them? Explain that. To yeah. me. Yes. Okay. When I was, when after I, when I, we started dating, I had just moved back from, I'd broken up with my girlfriend. Um, on the big island and just moved back to Kauai and uh, I was kind of in between living situations when I started dating the defendant officially and so what, like I what said does, what does that mean you were in between living situations so where where were you living when you started dating defendant I was I was living this, this man Ron who passed away I guess eight nine years ago 
So you were living with you were living with Ron in a home. Yes, and I would care give for for my rent um, for him. But you know, I was out moving around a lot. I just gotten back from the Big Island, and you know, just mm -hmm. kind of staying with him temporarily. How did you him. How did you meet Defendant then? We knew each other before. Like I said, she had uh, been you know on the island since she was I guess fourteen, and we had been friends before that. And and I was friends with her father um, and her mother. Um, we were also living the same way. Um, you so, know, at that, have, so at that I mean, time, Mr. Coleman, you were living on that national park land as well. Uh, I would go there and visit, yes. Okay. And camp. Okay. Um, in the summer of 2021, did you go a week or longer without contacting the defendant on that trip? Right at the end of the trip, specifically? It was a week, summer of 2021. Home. There was a week or... No. No. Okay. No. Um, did you ever refuse to allow defendant to speak with Isaac on that trip? No. Okay. Did you ever allow refuse Isaac to call defendant on that trip? No. Um, was there any point in time during that five weeks of the summer of 2021 that defendant didn't know where overnight parenting was taking place for Isaac? No. We stayed on that property our, our entire time. You know, summer is very busy on Hawaii, and uh, honestly, we couldn't really do a lot of things because of the traffic. So, but, you had, you know, so I'm sorry, Mr. Coleman, you had provided her with the physical address of the location where parenting time would be exercised, which is yes, stated as required in the 2021 order? Yes. Yeah, okay. As far as I know. Um, and then did you exercise your five weeks of parenting time in the summer of 2022? Um. Well, this 20, that's last summer, right? Just last summer, correct? Yeah, it's Alaska. Okay. Um, and, and did defendant agree for you exercising that five weeks of parenting time in Alaska? Yes. Did she help Isaac prepare for that five weeks of parenting time in Alaska? No, he was very ill-prepared. Um, I had to, you know, she forgot to bring his uh, sleeping bag. I had to buy a new one. Um, she refused to uh, provide luggage for him, so I had to bring a backpack from Hawaii for him to use. Um, I asked her, you know, a couple things to get for him, uh, you know, tennis shoes. She bought him boots that were very uncomfortable, and I had to mail back to her. And a lot of the other things she provided for him, um, you know, I had to mail back because, um, you know, they were unuseful, although she demanded I take them. Do you remember the um, the exchange when you came to get Isaac for that trip to Alaska the summer of 2022? Do you remember where you and defendant met up? We met in uh, the Civic Center Park. Okay. And did defendant have anyone with her when you guys met up? She had her husband with her. Okay. I mean, well, they weren't married then. Okay. Um, where at the Civic Center did you meet up? Um. Uh, on a picnic table. Okay, on a picnic table. Um, do you remember what you were doing when defendant and defendant's husband and I, Isaac arrived that day? Um, I was drinking a beer. I always buy alcohol for defendant and her family when we interact. It, um, it makes the, the whole experience a lot better for them. So I bought a six pack and uh, I just was drinking one of the beers. Had you drank any of the beers before that or is that your first beer? Um, I think it was, yeah, my first beer. It was, I bought it for them, so. Um, did defendant say anything to you at that time when you were drinking a beer as she was handing Isaac over to you? Uh, well, it was actually a very disrespectful interaction. She went into her tick lecture about like the, the apparently there's a tick. Every year we get the same lecture about how there's ticks everywhere. And uh, she had these little pads that she was demanding that we rub ourselves down with when we got back uh, to the hotel room. Um, mm -hmm. She brought all Isaac's prop, uh, property that I, you know, for Christmas, I bought him all uh, camping gear um, for his trip. And uh, it was all still in the packages. He had not, she not allowed him to use it. Um, so they went right into basically degrading me. Um, and refused to help me take the things out of the packages. 
um, to, to help him pack. Um, you know, went right into, uh, oh, you know, you don't know anyone in Alaska. Um, you know, that just, just very disrespectful. They could have, you know, helped me pack and uh, they refused. Um, so defendant didn't say something to you along the lines of she'd prefer if you didn't drink when you were um, exercising parenting time with Isaac. Not that I recall. No. Usually when I, the last, the time I had met the defendant before and her husband, I met them at Right, right Brain Brewery um, and uh, I bought them drinks and we sat down and had a pleasant conversation while Isaac played uh, video games. Okay. So. Um, I know you, you already went through outlining all the different places you stayed in Alaska um, last summer. Um, what was your housing for those five weeks? Um, I think you said, I'm looking at my notes here, but so there was some time that you were... Um, you stayed at a hotel when you first got to Anchorage. You went to a family fair in Brisbane for three days? Uh, Gerwood. <clears throat> Gerwood. Gerwood, okay. Do you remember calling a uh, defendant while you were at that fair? Um, well, Isaac has his phone, so I'm sure he called her. I don't, uh, I, I might have called her. I, I'm not sure. Do you recall it, um, telling defendant on the phone that you had consumed so many marijuana edibles that you couldn't walk? Um, no, I did consume some, some marijuana edibles. I have a bad back um, and I was in severe pain. I actually have never taken the edibles before. And I didn't realize how strong they were. Okay. Um, so I, you know, I, I ate a couple of them and I, uh, it affected my ability to, to my body just kind of like was not working. Okay. And this is when Isaac was with you? Yes. Were you able to care for a lot, uh, for Isaac if your body wasn't working? Um, yes. I, we still went back to the, we were on our way to have dinner at this fancy restaurant. And then I was standing in line and I said, my, my body just started to, you know, not respond. And so we left and went back to the campground. And I, I cooked dinner for him there. Okay. Um, okay, so I'm just looking back at this. So then um, then you were in the Gurwood area. When you were in Gurwood, that was the campground? Yes. You had, a, you had a tent you pitched? We had a tent. Okay, so you and Isaac shared a tent. Well, I had a hammock that I kissed my back, but um, you know, Isaac wanted me to sleep in the tent with him. Okay. you know, comfortable. Um, and then at some point you bumped into your friends, Jimmy and Robin. Was that just kind of happenstance that you bumped into them or was it planned? Well, I knew they were up there and, you know, moving to that area. I was actually uh, looking for another friend of mine who, you know, told me about Girdwood, um, but I wasn't able to find him. Um, we had only uh, intended to stay there a few days and take a train to Denali National Park. Like I said, the, you know, that area was on fire and, uh, you know, Gerwood is very comfortable and very, you know, beautiful place with a lot to do. Okay. So we decided to extend our time. And, uh, I, you know, I so ran how into. Many, how many nights in total were you with Jimmy and Robin? Um, well, when I met up with them, I, uh, we, I helped them move in. Jimmy paid me uh, to help him, you know, he had a U-Haul. And for an entire day, um, I helped him move his stuff into the garage while Isaac hung out um, in the living room and, and um, watched movies and played video games with Robin. We stayed that night and then we went back to Gerwood. And uh, I think for, for two more nights, we, we did some more hikes there before, uh, uh, before we flew out to um, Juneau, Alaska. And you said in Juneau, you rented a hotel room for one night for Isaac's birthday? Yes. July 19th. And then, yeah. then you said the weather was pretty crummy. It was pretty crummy. You know, it's uh, there's a glacier there. All the towns that have glaciers are pretty cold. I wasn't aware that it rained 70% of the year in Juneau. Um, we, you know, we were going to stay there two weeks, um, but I cut that time short um, because of the weather. Jimmy and Robin invited us to come back. They I'm sorry, it's quickly. Well, so how long do you think you stayed in Juneau? I think we were there for only 
five or six days. And where did you sleep during that time? Uh, we were in a tent. Tent, okay. And you mentioned it was crummy weather and that you had campfires and that kind of helped. We were able to have campfires, yes. Okay. Um, so the, the home that you stayed at with Jimmy and Robin, is that the home you plan to stay at with Isaac this summer? Yes, I'm, I'm moving there. Okay. And um, I know at one point you said it was a five bedroom home and then at another point you said it was a three bedroom home. How many bedrooms is the home? Um, it's actually five. Like I said, there's, there's, uh, there's, it's a three-story place. Um, you know, the Jimmy and Robin occupy one room. There's an, uh, another room next to them. On the third floor, there's two rooms for me and Isaac. And then on the bottom floor, there's another smaller room. And none of the other floor, none of the other rooms are occupied? No. Okay. How much are you paying for rent for that? Um, well, it depends on, I'm going to pay them more in winter, of course, because the heat bill. Okay. But it's going to be 500 a month, I believe. Okay. Was there ever a time during those five, five weeks in Alaska that you were sick or something was going on that you were unable to properly care for Isaac, that you were unable to supervise him? No. Did you ever leave? I did, oh, go ahead. I did kind of catch a cold at the end okay. of our trip and infected my ability to care for him. Um, did you ever leave him unattended? Uh, no, I, I did. You know, I worked for that one day helping Jimmy and Robin move in. He, he hung out with Robin. Um, then I was offered another job. Um, and that day, he once again, he hung out with Robin while I went and worked for, uh, five, for I think, five hours. Okay. Um, did you give defendant the address where that all that parenting time in Alaska was going to be? Did you give her that in advance? Because that was part of the 2021 order that you would give defendant the physical address of the location where any overnight parenting time was occurring. Um, she never asked for it. I did tell her she's fully aware that we were going to camp um, mm -hmm. and, you know, and hike around Alaska. She never said she had a problem with it. She never asked for the, for, uh, the physical address of the campgrounds. I did communicate with her um, where we were at every day and at every point of our uh, experience, you know, I told her, hey, today we're on this hike. Um, today we're flying to Juneau. Um, I, you know, I told her immediately when I ran into Jimmy and Robin, I was going to help them move in. Um, was there ever a point in time when defendant couldn't reach you or Isaac while you were in Alaska? Um, there, there was, you know, a, a couple days when we were, um, we went on the uh, Fox Island tour. Um, this was out in the ocean. Um, and Isaac, I don't think he brought his phone with him that day. Um, I think that's, and then toward the end, she was basically harassing him so much, demanding that he call, that I was at that point forcing him to, to call her every day. And uh, I think as I look at, um, you, know, um, the, you know, his phone, I think there was two days that he didn't call her that toward the very end, but those two days we were fishing and it was raining. So he didn't bring his phone with him those days. To, did, to did, you ever, did you ever tell Isaac he couldn't call his mom? No, no, I, I, I encouraged him and, um, you know, because I know that, you know, she would worry, but he, he's kind of like a little cold in that sense. He's, he's very comfortable with me and he, you know, um, doesn't realize that, you know, it kind of hurts her feelings that he, he doesn't call her. So I encouraged him as much as I could. Um, and like I said, I had to force him. So. Did you notify defendant that you and Isaac caught an earlier flight back to Traverse City from after that summer 2022 trip to Alaska? I did, I was, she never contacted me and told me that she was out of the state. Um, you know, when I booked the flight, I didn't realize that we were basically going to have to spend the night uh, at the airport. Um, so, you know, I went to the ticket counter and said, hey, could you get us uh, the next flight? Um, and then I, I contacted the defendant and said, hey, we're going to get back at, uh, earlier so we don't have to sleep at the airport. Um, so and, how, much, uh, how much earlier did you get back into Traverse City than what the original flight was going to get you back at? Um, I think it was like 10 hours. 
Okay. Yeah, friends. Like I said, it was an entire night. We would have slept at the airport. So uh, instead of arriving at 5.30 in the morning, we arrived at 5.30 in the afternoon the day before. Okay, so like 12 hours. About, yes. So I'm going to, I'm going to point you to exhibit 10 of my supplemental to my supplemental response. It's a, a text exchange between you and the defendant from August 2nd, which I think is the day you are returning. Um, it looks like August 2nd at 1125 AM, you texted her. I got us earlier flight 530. Um, defendant responded. Okay, great. We are driving back from Colorado and I don't think we'll be back by then. So maybe it will work best for me to come pick up Isaac at the hotel tomorrow morning. Then you have another night together. And then you wrote, I don't have a hotel. I suppose we will get one. And defendant wrote, oh, I'm sorry. I thought you had one. Does that work okay? And your response was, it does not work. You should have told me a lot earlier. There are no rooms available. But you're just telling us now that you just gave her the same day notice that your flight was going to come in 12 hours earlier. So where you were supposed to come in at 5.30 a.m. on August 3rd, you instead got in at 5.30 p.m. on August 2nd, correct? I understand that, yes. Okay. Um, but then you went you went on um, with Traverse is racist, racist and dangerous, worse than Kingsley. Do you think this is funny? You having us having to camp. You're fucked up. Thanks. And then defendant wrote, I do not think it is funny. Isaac said you were staying the night and I figured you had gotten a hotel room. Do you want me to call around? And your response was, are you stupid or just mean? Since it's so easy, why don't you rent the room for us? Because if you don't, we will sleeping on the street. Thanks. We are tired and hungry. At which point, defendant wrote back, I found a room at Econo Lodge near Chum's Corners. I'll book it if you can Uber there. You responded, okay, fine. Uh, defendant then responded back with the um, confirmation number and the address for the hotel. And your response was, thanks, we are not white enough to be safe in Traverse without a hotel room. It's a very bad place. Um, yeah. Do you remember that exchange? I do, and that's true. Okay. You know, like, we're very brown, me and my son, especially in summer. and. Um, with, you know, like when my time together with him, people were, you know, throwing garbage at us and, and calling us the N-word. You know, in, in Traverse summer. City? In Traverse City. Okay. Are, are you African-American, sir? No. Okay. Um, can, do you mind telling me what your background is? I'm Native, Native American, um, French and Russian. Okay. Okay. Um, so back to that um text exchange it looks like defendant purchased you a, a hotel room that night is that correct yes um which i actually paid her back for okay but you needed her to find you a hotel room um after you're the one that came home 12 hours early and blew up at her i wanted her to make some effort she could have called another one of her family members to come and get isaac um you know but i mean she could have told me she never at any point did she say that texted me saying that she was uh in Colorado. So my son told me when we were at the airport in Detroit, she says, oh, well, you know, mom's still in Alaska. I didn't know that she was, I mean, that she's still in Colorado. I didn't know that until Isaac told me. She never but communicated. Do you understand that defendant I thought she would be home in time if you were on the original flight? The originally planned flight, she would have been there. I, I don't believe they actually got there in time. I mean, they were late to get Isaac, and obviously. And what were, were, so you you uh, think you think it should not have been your responsibility when you flew in a day early to provide overnight care for Isaac that that should have fallen on defendant. I would have, I would have rented a room for him, but since the defendant did not communicate with me that she had been in, in Colorado, she was not going to be back from Colorado in time. I felt that she could make some effort to to rent a room for us. But but Mr. Coleman. You just acknowledged you changed your flight plan the day of. Um, so otherwise, but for, I mean, but for your change in plans, defendant would have been there at the agreed upon time. Okay, I, we'll move on. We'll move on. I do not believe she would have. Um, she could have told me she was in Colorado at any point, but she didn't. She has an obligation to tell you where she's exercising her time when she's not in the care of Isaac. Is that I, I've never I've never heard of that. Do you have to report to the defendant where you are? Fair. I think it would be fair to tell me that, hey, I'm in Colorado and we're coming back and not have my son tell me. I mean, it's just common. I, I've, not heard, I've not heard of that before. That's interesting. Um, it's not good co-parenting. <laughs> I mean, I shouldn't have to hear it from my son. She could have texted me and said, hey, we're, 
you know, we're on our way back from Colorado. I'll not have to hear from my son. So what were what were you planning to do for your own overnight accommodations then after expecting defendant to come 12 hours early? What were you going to do if you didn't have Isaac that night when well, you got in? I was arriving at 530 in the we were arriving at 530 in the morning. But you um, you you're but sir, you just acknowledged that you changed the flight plan so that you would get in at 530 at night. We didn't have to sleep at the airport, right. So I have got, so when you got, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm asking the questions. When you got in at 5.30 at night, obviously you had to start making plans for what you were going to do that night. What were you going to do that night? I was going to stay with one of my friends. And you couldn't have taken Isaac to stay with your friend? Um, I, well, it's not that easy. It depends on who's available. Um, then, I mean, it's the middle of summer. A lot of my friends work. Okay. So, Do you understand how this is contradictory because you're expecting defendant to be available when you change your plans. You're expecting defendant to make arrangements for you when you change your plans. You're expecting defendant to have her family be readily available, yet you're saying you didn't have those plans made. I understand, but you're you're obviously making it very, they were making it very difficult. She could have called any of her family members to come get Isaac. Um, she she didn't. She okay. could have told me okay, before. We'll move on. We'll move on. Um, in that quote that I read, um, you just acknowledge that Travers is racist and dangerous, worse than Kingsley. Do you think this is funny? What do you mean by that? Um, well, I attended, uh, you know, two of the suicide marches for the, um, um, you know, children who committed suicide in Kingsley from the extreme racism. Um, you know, my friend Jason, uh, his family, uh, he married a woman who's Puerto Rican and they experienced uh, you know, severe harassment living in that community because uh, basically they're brown. Like it's it's a, a very racist place. I mean, my experience. And what and what was your experience again? What happened? Like said, love. We were the garbage was thrown at us, and you know we were cussed at in Traverse City. Who's we? Me and Isaac when we were walking down the sidewalk. Downtown Traverse City. Uh, I think we were over in um, near Logan's Landing on the on the walking trail there by the bridge. Okay. I experienced, I like I said, I'm very brown. I experienced a lot of racism living in Traverse City okay. during my time there. Um, did you have a problem getting to your hotel room at the Econa Lodge that defendant purchased for you? No, I I paid for Uber. Okay. And then did you get some dinner with Isaac that night? Yeah, we got pizza. Do you remember how you paid for it? What's that? Do you remember how you paid for it? Um, Isaac had $100 his mother had given him. So we used that because I didn't have any cash on me. Okay. Um, so you, you used all that's why I paid her, uh, you know, $300. It was $200 for the room. And I, I sent, I paid Tyler $300 because we used that 100 for, for dinner and whatnot. Um, did you know defendant had packed that for for Isaac in case of an emergency? Yeah, and he never used it. And I felt that that was kind of an emergency and that we should use it. And I, I paid her back, so. Um, that Econa Lodge reservation, it included breakfast, correct? Um, I think. Okay. We didn't um, exercise it, I mean. You, so you did not get at breakfast in the morning? No, we were, Isaac, uh, we kind of stayed up late and watched movies, um, and, uh, you know, he, he slept a little late, so the defendant said that, uh, that she was supposed to arrive, pick up at Isaac at 9 in the morning, she didn't show up till about 10, 15, um, we were waiting in the parking lot for about an hour and 15 minutes. Why were you, why were you waiting in the parking lot? Well, I thought she would be on time, um. You know, so we, the way that the hotel was is it has like uh, locked doors, like the minute you leave it locks. Um, and I left the card, you know, the swiping card in the room and we walked out. So, I mean, I literally couldn't get back in there. I left the card. I thought she would be on time. So. Um, um, what happened when the defendant and her husband showed up that morning to pick up Isaac? Um, as I described before, uh, they were, you know, an, uh, an hour, over an hour, hour, 15 minutes late. Um, they, 
showed up. They were acting uh, horrible. They were horrible. They were, you know, demanded um, that I, that Isaacs take, give his backpack and all of his stuff from Alaska to me and take back to Hawaii. Literally, um, you know, told me, um, take his property, take, they're saying it's my property, which is not. It's Isaac's, so all the things I bought, camping gear I bought him for Christmas, um, the things he got in Alaska and I purchased for him. They're demanding, I'm saying that it's it's my property and to take it back to, to leave and go back to Hawaii with it, which uh, I refused, um, but they kept at me. Um, and I did take his phone he has, uh, because of the 5G, um, okay. 3G, 3G is no longer um, in use. So the old phone he has, he was demanding that I take it back to Hawaii. And that is the only thing I, I actually took back um, out of that stuff. So like I said before, I was begging them to stop. Um, they're saying I was cussing and um, calling them names. How, I, long, I how long did this interaction last? Um, I don't know, maybe five, five, ten minutes, I guess. Sir, can I ask you why you're itching so much? Is there something going on with your skin? I'm sweating. <laughs> it's oh, hot. Okay, okay, okay. Um, okay, and then in response to that, um, I'm going to direct you to exhibit 14, a supplemental response. Um, it's my supplemental response. Did you then go ahead and post, um, defendant and her husband's picture along with your picture with your son? all over the internet asking for help finding two men that witnessed an interaction at the motel, the Super 8, the Super 8 motel in Traverse City. Is this true? Is this what you did? Yes, I did. And I never found them, unfortunately. Okay. Did you think that was an extreme response? Uh, well, they once again, they're saying I was cussing and uh, calling them names. Um, which I wasn't. Um, the two men were sitting in their vehicle, literally 15 feet from us, watching the whole experience. Um, you thought so, it was a good idea to put your son's picture on the internet if you were afraid for your safety, like you claimed? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, so I don't want that interaction to happen again. Um, and, you know, the things that they're saying are horrible. They never happened. So I needed a witness. Like, of course, my son is too young to use a, as a witness. I thought I could possibly find them, but I didn't. Um, are you opposed to using the Our Family Wizard app to communicate with the defendant? I, I hear you say multiple times that you find it very hard to co-parent, very hard to communicate. I'm, I'm trying to understand if Our Family Wizard would be a, a, a good thing for, for the two of you to use. Um, I tried that before and she wasn't responding and to any of uh, the things I was sending her. And, um, you know, it, I, I live in a place that I don't get very good service. So um, it wasn't working. But I mean, obviously, if we can get this resolved, there's not going to be really much to, uh, to go over. I mean, but I'd be willing to try to use it or maybe another app that uh, may work better. I mean, okay. Um, I'm, I'm going to direct you to exhibit 15 to my supplemental response. I'm just going to take from some of the exchange between you and the defendant. Um, but defendant says um, you will need to download the app, my family wizard, so we can communicate on there from now on. Um, then she says you should have received an email with a temporary username and password. I paid your $120 a year subscription. We can transfer our conversation there. And then, um, then she, you said, I didn't, I didn't. And she said, is your email still? And she identifies your email and you said, no, it now is. And you gave a new email. Um, um, again, you continue to talk to her. She writes back, you should have received an email now with the sign in for my family wizard. Um, you said, please, I'm having a hard time. You're giving me a panic attack. Stop. I can't figure it out. Just answer the phone. Um, she wrote back, we can text, do you need help figuring it out? And then you wrote, please answer, please, what is it you want? She said again, we can text, I don't feel comfortable talking to you over the phone after your harassment. You go on and on again, um, I have horrible PTSD, I don't know how much this hurts me. Um, Isaac deserves a healthy relationship with his father, please see what you are doing to him, he doesn't even see me, I feel horrible. 
She writes, you have a right to see Isaac. I would like to use the app. How do you need help using it? Then you say, I'm going to file and I'm going to file the order. So we're done talking. And then you put, I don't understand the purpose of the app. And then she writes, the app will help us communicate in a healthier way. I don't want to prevent you and Isaac from having a relationship. I know it means a lot to you both. I do want it to be a health, healthy though for all of us. And I'm concerned. Um, you said, please tell me your concerns. She says, again, I put them all on the app. Um, can you please log into the app so we can continue our conversation there? Um, it, she writes, I sent you a message on the me and my family wizard app. We can correspond on there moving forward. You wrote yes or no, what time? I don't have time to figure that out. Refusal to answer my questions is not okay. And she writes, I've responded to those messages on the app. Can you, I see you logged in. Can you please read my messages there? And you wrote, no, I can't. So it sounds like defendant wanted to speak on the My Family Wizard app and you, ref you refused, but you're now telling me you would be open to it. It doesn't work very well, but I would be open to it now. That was, you know, during me texting her, she could have just answered my questions rather than forcing me to use the app that I couldn't get it to work. Are you are you aware that our Family Wizard app is, is a benefit in the sense that it helps gauge um, tensions in the communications so that it doesn't, it's it can, it can cut down on the harassing texts? I understand that, but she's using it to uh, just, just to antagonize me and not respond. Okay. Um, I'm gonna refer you to um, your exhibit um, that you filed a while back here, uh, December 28th, some email communication between you at, or text communication between you and the defendant. In it, you said, um, women's brains are one third smaller than men's brains. It is fact. What was the point of sending that um, text to the, to the defendant? Um, that's a joke. I mean, it is true, but it's a joke. Got some bad, bad taste. Okay, so that was just, you just do bad jokes. I, I don't think that defendant laughed at it. I'm gonna also then send you to my um, exhibit one to my response, um, my response of pleading in that Exhibit one, you stop making decisions without my consent. It's disrespect. I understand you're being a non-obedient sort woman toward men, but I am your son's father, Christ's sake. Nothing, nothing I will ever disfirm you. What does that mean? Um, I'm, I'm not sure what that's referring to when I texted that. It might have been a conversation we had over the phone. Um, she, she doesn't respect me as, you know, my son's father. Um, she never, never respected our relationship and, you know, was cheating on me. What, what does non-obedient woman mean? Um... I'm not sure what I was referring to at the time. It could have been. Okay. I can, I can remind, I can remind you um, if I go back a page, um, you, or if I just go a few texts ahead, it, it was talking specifically about therapy for Isaac. You said no therapy. I would not install that. We are adults. Therapists only want to be paid. Take the time and study psychology yourself, work on yourself, I did. The defendant responded with, there is nothing shameful about asking for help. And then your response was, I am fine, Isaac spending time with Jeff. That is fine, it is very empathetic of him. Help, you must not me, I am here to help you. I am your partner raising our son. Then you went into nothing will change that, especially now stop making decisions without my consent. It's disrespect. I understand you're being a non-obedient sort woman toward men, but I am your son's father. Christ's sake, nothing will ever disfirm you. 
It sickens me to know you forced a four-year-old boy into therapy and you made one appointment for yourself. You put our son in the system stating there is something wrong him. Our son without my consent, how can you ever believe any decision you make is in the good interest of Isaac? Then you went into being irritated that she didn't send you a Christmas gift. Does that jog your memory? Um, I do re remember saying that, uh, you know, I never, this was the first year I got to talk to my son on Christmas. Um, and, you know, he he's, wasn't allowed to send me a card. Um, this was a, one of the first years I got a card from him. Um, okay, uh, she, the, the text didn't... actually dis dispute what you just said. I can read further. Uh, you acknowledge that the, the the card was sent to the wrong address and it got to you a few days That's late, a little further on. So you did get that. Uh, so that I I would dispute what you're saying there. I guess that my question is, what is a non-obedient sort woman? Is that something with your religion? No, that, that you know, she never asked my permission to uh, put Isaac in counseling and believes that there's something wrong with him. Um, I, I just don't agree with that, right? You know, what happened to him in counseling didn't help him. Are you against? Um, you know, you if, she was, if she was uh, respectful and, you know, respected our relationship, she would have contacted me first and asked my permission. Hey, is it okay that I put Isaac in counseling? Are you against counseling? Uh, no, I believe it can be helpful, but not with a four, a four year, you know, he's four years old. And whenever, you know, someone gets caught in the defendant's lies, her resort is basically to put them in counseling. But she would never um, attend counseling herself. She would force me into it. She would force her son into it. Um, but she doesn't see that, you know, hey, there might be something wrong with me. You know, I could use counseling. I, you know, I, I did a year and a half. My son did a year and a half. As far as I know, she attended one counseling session. Okay. In your pleadings and today, um, you're acknowledging that you have PTSD. Um, when were you diagnosed with this? Uh, when through the counseling um, in Michigan. Okay. And um, does it impact your day-to-day -day living? Um, it, well, it's, it's mainly to do with my son. You know, I, I, I worry about him constantly, um, you know, causes me a lot of stress. I also have a, a, a acidic stomach. I unfortunately drank three cups of coffee this morning and it's making me extremely ill, plus the stress. Not supposed to have anything acidic or, or, or take, um, you know, narcotics or even ibuprofen. I had a tooth pulled um, about five days ago, and I was taking ibuprofen for about three days straight, and it's really uh, done a number on my stomach. Um, okay. You also state in your January 14th responsive pleading under Factor J. Um, I do not have a driver's license because I have random seizures that would put myself and our son safety in jeopardy. What are those seizures? Um, I've only had uh, like about one a year, but they're really, really extremely bad. My, my, I had a black eye for, um, it just healed, um, I guess about six months ago. Um, I've broken my nose twice. Um, you know, it's it's mainly for I, I just wouldn't feel right having a driver's license and putting other people's um, lives in danger, especially my son. So you have you have one of these seizures about once a year. Do you have a cause for what causes them? Um, well, I used to have them more frequently. I was told that uh, there's an, a, a nerve pinched in my back. Um, you know, I, my, my parents severely abused me and, uh, you know, kicked in my ribs when I was uh, about five years old. 
and uh, it's, it's, you know, um, something's like pinched in there. They've offered me surgery to, to try to get in there and fix it, but um, I never did. I took medication um, for a couple of years um, when I lived on Maui. Um, I didn't have seizures, but once again, um, you know, I'm not I'm not supposed to take any kind of like medications or, you know, um, alcohol uh, really like affect my stomach very bad. So I just prefer not to take anything. I shouldn't drink coffee, alcohol, or, or, or take drugs, period. But, um, you know, with the tooth pain, I have to. Um, okay. Um, I, if I'm looking at my exhibit 17 of my supplemental response. It's that 2017 psychological evaluation um, done by Marilyn Fitzgerald here in town. Um, I see in that in your medical history that you have hepatitis C. Is that I under don't, control? I don't have that anymore. Okay. Um, I, I took medication for that in um, in Traverse City for for three months. Uh, once again, before that, I I, I couldn't drink alcohol. Um, you know, I I was stage four. Um, you know, which is pretty, pretty bad. So do you know how you got that? Um, I have, I had the, a rare type, you know, there's four different kinds of hepatitis C and I had hep hepatitis, uh, C, um, E. So, um, not how sure. You, I how do you contract that? Um, it can be blood to blood. So, um, ha, do you have a history of, of injecting, taking, uh, um, medic, uh, no, I think, I, have, IV? Um, I, think I, I used to donate a lot of blood, like when I lived in Florida for extra money. Okay. Um, it could have happened through then or, uh, you know, sh uh, sharing a razor with someone. Okay. Um, but they um, said I had it, uh, probably contracted it when I was about 16. And, you know, I, I wasn't doing intravenous drugs then at all. Were you so, doing intravenous drugs at any point in your life? No. Okay. So you clarified that you weren't doing them then, but you've never, you've never done IV drug use. No, it's not a thing that I do, no. Okay. And you've never done, you've never done IV drug use? No. Okay. Um, I'm now going to have you look at um, exhibit 16 to my supplemental response. Um, that is a letter from... Catherine Martin looks like uh, it's dated October 10, 2018, um, in which she indicates that you um, called her to inquire about co-parenting classes. Does that jog your memory? Um, I, I believe I did, and um, it was too expensive. Okay. Um, in her letters, just, just for my reference, Ms. Bellman, was all this available to your client before the 2021 step or their their last step? Yeah, I'm I'm sure it was. I guess you're going I, way back. I mean, and some of this stuff was probably yeah. ordered because of that and, and okay. incorporated okay. into the step. I mean, okay, I, you know, some I, of this had we some of this needs to be related to our issue yeah. at hand. Yeah, and, and I understand cross, and I understand. I've given some leeway, I think, quite frankly, I, to you everyone. Have. You have. And, 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 and I think you could argue that he opened the door to some of this. So I, it's not a, a slight on anyone. I, I, but, you know, we've got to we've got to get to the issue at hand, I think. OK, at point. I, I just would like to acknowledge that in that letter, it said that um, 
Mr. Coleman was not ready to co-parent on anything. He was openly hostile and uncooperative. It was impossible for he and Sierra to agree on the slightest thing that would be in their son's best. Well, interest. again, if this isn't his, if this isn't, if these aren't his statements, I don't want things just read onto the record. That's not being asked to be admitted as an exhibit. Okay. I mean, we haven't gone through any proper channels whatsoever. No, no. Come up with, with when when it's his statements, you know, yep. that's that's fine to address. They, they, he's, yep. But other people, act, you know, those yep. are, that's certainly not a court statement. Okay. In your January 14th, 2023 responsive pleading, um, you state that you had a health investigator. You had to contact a health investigator to keep Isaac safe from Trisha Short, his former counselor. Um, I know you touched on this in your testimony earlier. Um, how was Trisha harming Isaac? Um, she was telling him I wasn't his father. Um, and that Jeff was his father. I, like I said before, I wasn't aware because I wasn't, you know, allowed to ask him any questions. And um, finally, when we got some uh, some time, quality time together, he he broke down, punched me in the face. It was really confused that Trisha had been telling him that I I wasn't his father, and you know the defendant had already been broken up with Jeff for, for over a year by then. And he was just really confused on who was his father. And then again, he broke down and said, well, yeah, Jeff was dragging me around by my hair. And I did tell Trisha Short, you know, I, I told her that multiple times and, you know, she, she never admitted that in court. So, um, you know, I contacted Trisha and confronted her about this and, you know, she, of course, denied it. And um, I, I asked the defendant to, to stop taking him to Trisha. She refused. Um, I asked Trisha to stop seeing him. She refused. She told me that I didn't have the right to, to ask her to stop seeing him. And, uh, I, I, you know, I, I, I gave them three months to stop the sessions before I, I contacted a health investigator. And what was, what was the conclusion of that health investigation? Did it have any impact on Ms. Short's license? Uh, I never went out, out, out for a license. All I asked was the health investigator contact her and tell her to stop seeing my son to honor to honor, you know, my wishes as a father, okay. and she did. Um, okay, and then you you stated in your prior testimony that um, Trisha Short followed you around and made lewd comments to you. Can you expand yeah. on that? Yes, uh, sh I saw her on the street um, on my way to work. She followed me to my place of work. I was working at the, uh, or, Rare Bird uh, Brewery in Traverse City. So she started coming to my work late at night with her girlfriends drinking and uh, making lewd comments toward me while I was working. And, what, uh, what were the comments, sir? Um, that I, was, I don't really remember. Actually, the, the waitresses were telling me um, what she was saying. And uh, it was okay. very offensive. And I, I stopped working there, you know, to, to, cause it was stressing me out. She was coming there almost every night. So. Okay. I got a different job. Mr. Coleman, do you have a criminal record? Um, I have a, a few, uh, I used to smoke a lot of marijuana. Um, I don't anymore. Um, at all. Uh, I believe that's it. There's an old shoplifting charge from maybe 20 years ago that was kind of a mistake. I note in the court's 2018 order, they state you should obtain counseling um, and it should include counseling to work on your anger. Um, did you go to counseling for anger and do you feel you still have anger issues? I did do the, you know, the year and a half of counseling and, you know, the 
the uh, I was diagnosed with PTSD mainly from being, you know, dragged through the courts and um, uh, having to deal with lawyers. The, uh, the you know the Trisha Short, um, you know, uh, harassing me, my son being abused and me kept from him. Um, I, I did have more anger issues then. A lot, a lot, a lot of that was to do with my mother. My con, con, uh, interaction with my mother was very abusive to me, and she was always a, a part of my life. And until just a, about a, about two a year or two ago, I I just you know don't interact with her anymore at all and that's that's really helped because I was really worried about her and felt that she was my responsibility but uh you know and I had anger issues toward um you know her the, the abuse that I experienced and you know they they won't interact with my son or even acknowledge that uh you know he's a part of their family which really hurts me and um, okay. made me extremely angry, but I've I've gotten over that. Just kind of put it all aside. I just don't interact with interact with them anymore. It's unfortunate. Okay, so uh, Mr. Coleman, you've touched on your religious beliefs and um, ascend. You you mentioned ascending to God's kingdom. What do you mean by that? Ascending. Um, well, I I believe in the Urantia book. It's a type of Christianity, and okay. uh, it, it states that basically, you know, we will, uh, you know, our work is, is a physical work on earth. When we lose this body, it's like a caterpillar to a butterfly. Um, we ascend to the heavens, and our work begins there for our father, and, you know, and continues. So when you reach a state of, uh, you know, the, the pure light, you ascend, when you leave this body, you, you know, you ascend to, to, to work in, in greater work for our, our father's kingdom, which is. So this know, book, universe. you said this book of Urantia, Urantia, um, is that a Christian? You said it's Christian. It's a Christian base. It mostly focuses on Jesus and being um, Christ-like in our actions. Okay. Is there anything about aliens in that book? I feel like I've heard things about aliens. Yeah, it's, uh, well, they they believe we believe that we were brought here. That you know, um, like we were seated. Adam and Eve were. Um, you know, came from a, another sphere and colonized our planet. They weren't actually human beings. Um, okay. So. Um, and is that something you want taught to Isaac? Um, he has a Rancha book, but his mother is very anti-religion in general. She's uh, tried to throw it away a few times. I haven't pushed it on him. It's 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 pretty hard to read. Um, I mean, it's a huge book and a lot of big words, and he's tried to read it, but um, it's not interesting to him. Um, I'm hoping this summer to, uh, you know, have more time with him and have the book and and kind of go over mainly the life of Jesus, you know. Okay. Um, being honest, you know. Final final question I have for you, Mr. Coleman. Um, in earlier, um, I think before we were on the record, you mentioned that Isaac indicated to you that he would like to spend his birthday, which is July 19th, with his friends in, in this area. Is that correct? Um, yeah, he really loves having a birthday party with his friends. He, he looks forward to it. That was his you know, his main disappointment, uh, you know, is spending the whole summer with me, but it's not an issue now. But I feel like also if we uh, do, you know, the July 10th, 
Um, that's close enough to his birthday that he'll still be able to have a birthday party, um, you know, around that time. And, and he'll get to have both. But he, under, he, would, he understands that, you know, we're going to have a lot of fun this summer. And um, he really wants to spend the summer with me and is willing to, you know. Okay. Okay. Well, Your Honor, I have no further questions. Thank you. Okay, so sir, what the way we'll do this sort of procedurally is it's what's called redirect. So if you feel like there's anything you wanted to explain more or go over um, or tell the court based on the questions that Ms. Belden asked you, that this is your opportunity. Um well, like I said, you know, the main thing is uh the, my interaction with the defendant and her husband, which is, uh, you know, hasn't went well with the past two times. Um, if they are willing to uh, have, to let Jason Potes, uh, you know, pick up and get Isaac. Um, I also believe that, uh, you know, possibly Kevin could fill this role if the, uh, the defendant's not there to, um, you know, kind of, uh, make him act out so I, you know I'm not sure if that's something that they're willing to 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 do you know I haven't we haven't added her lawyer didn't express that I'm totally willing to help um, you know she expresses her concerns with contact again Isaac has his own phone I, I don't restrict contact I, I encourage it um, even though she's not willing, you know, to pay part of his bill, um, you know, I'll, if it's really an issue for her, I mean, we can't have his, we can't have his phone on him all the time and we're not always in service. So, I mean, if she's calling, you know, five, six times a day and we don't answer once, um, you know, I don't, you know, want some huge, uh, big deal made about it um you know i what's working for me is every wednesday and sunday um and you know if, if she would like it to be every other day that he contact her then you know but while our time is in alaska that's that's fine too but it's really overbearing for him to have to talk to her you know several times a day i really don't Oh, what else to say? Okay. In other words, at this point, you rest? You rest your case? Um, I do. If they don't have any big further questions for me, I, I feel like I've uh, said everything I need Ms. to say. Ms. Belden indicated she didn't have any further questions. Ms. Belden, then we'll start with your. Did you want to give an opening statement? Um, no, I'll do a closing statement, Your Honor. That's okay. Oh, sure. Whatever you prefer. You reserved it from the beginning. So I'm just coming back to that. Yep. Question. Yep. I appreciate that. So in, in, um, in other words, your first witness, please. Yep. I would like to call the defendant Sierra LaRose.